Hello, and welcome to this webinar presentation by Global CPD, Teacher Training Services. This presentation is on mapping a coursebook for primary science education. In this session, we will explore how to identify curriculum standards, analyze coursebook content, align with learning objectives, create a scope and sequence, identify supplementary resources, plan assessments, differentiate instruction, and continuously review and revise your coursebook for optimal learning outcomes. As educators working with primary school students, it is imperative that we provide a structured and engaging learning experience that aligns with both curriculum standards and the unique needs of young learners. By mapping your coursebook effectively, you can ensure that your students receive a comprehensive and coherent science education that lays a solid foundation for their future learning. Throughout this webinar, we will not only discuss theoretical principles, but also focus extensively on the latest practical educational ideas and practices that can enhance the quality of primary science education. We understand that as professionals in the field of education, you are dedicated to providing the best possible learning experiences for your students, and we aim to equip you with the knowledge and tools to achieve this goal. So, let's begin our journey into the world of mapping coursebooks for primary science education, where we will discover how to create a meaningful and impactful learning experience for young minds. Here are the key steps involved in mapping a coursebook in a primary science subject. One, identify curriculum standards. Begin by reviewing the curriculum standards or guidelines provided by the educational authority for the specific science subject. These standards outline the essential concepts, skills, and knowledge that students should acquire. Here are some examples of curriculum standards for a primary school science subject, specifically in the field of biology. These examples highlight some of the essential concepts, skills, and knowledge that students should acquire in a primary school biology curriculum. Actual curriculum standards may vary depending on the educational authority and specific science subject. Here are some specific tips to identify curriculum standards for primary science effectively. Align with established standards. Utilize frameworks like the Next Generation Science Standards to match teaching resources and classroom activities with specific grade level outcomes. Incorporate scientific practices. Engage students in key practices, such as investigating, modeling, and critical thinking for better understanding of scientific methods. Cover disciplinary core ideas. Select resources that encompass fundamental concepts in physical sciences, life sciences, earth and space sciences, and applications of science. Embrace cross-cutting concepts. Ensure materials help students grasp overarching themes, such as the relationships between energy and matter or the role of structure in function. Progressive complexity. Choose resources that build on what students have previously learned and progressively introduce more complex ideas as they move up in grades. Diverse materials. Use a variety of resources like tactile science kits for direct engagement with physical concepts and digital media for dynamic presentations of information. Hands-on and experiential learning. Prioritize resources that offer concrete experiences, such as nature walks, which contextualize science in the student's environment. Motivation and engagement. Adopt interactive resources that stimulate curiosity, foster motivation, and support different modes of learning to keep students actively involved. Two, analyze the coursebook. Carefully study the content of the coursebook, including the topics, chapters, and subtopics covered. Pay attention to the order in which concepts are presented, the depth of coverage, and the overall coherence of the material. Here are some examples of topics, chapters, and subtopics that could be covered in a primary science coursebook. These examples demonstrate the organization of topics, chapters, and subtopics within a primary science coursebook. The order and depth of coverage may vary depending on the specific coursebook and curriculum standards. It's important to assess the coherence and progression of concepts to ensure effective learning. By carefully studying the coursebook content, teachers can ensure that their students are receiving a high-quality science education. 
here are some specific tips for carefully studying the content of the course book. Read the course book cover to cover. This will give you a general overview of the topics, chapters, and subtopics that are covered. Identify the main concepts and skills that are addressed in each chapter. This can be done by reading the chapter overview and the learning objectives. Pay attention to the way that concepts are sequenced and presented. This will help you to understand how the different concepts are interrelated. Identify any areas where the coverage is particularly thin or deep. This will help you to plan your lessons accordingly. Consider the overall coherence of the material. Make sure that the concepts are presented in a logical and consistent way. 3. Align with learning objectives. Determine the specific learning objectives for each unit or topic in the science curriculum. Learning objectives describe what students should be able to know, understand, and do by the end of a particular instructional unit. Ensure that the content aligns with these objectives. Here are examples of topics and subtopics from primary science that could be analyzed in terms of their content, order, depth, and coherence. These examples demonstrate how the content of the primary science curriculum can be analyzed. The order in which topics and subtopics are presented, the depth of coverage, and the overall coherence of the material are important considerations in designing an effective learning experience for young students. Actual curriculum materials may vary in terms of specific topics and subtopics covered, depending on the educational standards and curriculum guidelines in a particular region. To determine the specific learning objectives for each unit, identify the main topics in the science curriculum. Break down each topic into smaller subtopics. Write a learning objective for each subtopic. Once you have developed learning objectives, you can ask yourself, does the content address the learning objectives? Is the content presented in a way that is easy for students to understand? Do the activities provide students with opportunities to practice what they have learned? It is also important to keep your learning objectives in mind when developing assessments for your students. Your assessments should measure how well students have achieved the learning objectives. Four, create a scope and sequence. Develop a scope and sequence document that outlines the sequence of topics and the estimated time frame for each unit or chapter. Consider the logical progression of concepts, prerequisite knowledge, and any dependencies between topics. Here are examples of adapted scope and sequence information outlining the sequence of topics and estimated time frames for each unit or chapter in primary science. These examples provide an adapted scope and sequence document outlining the sequence of topics and estimated time frames for each unit or chapter in primary science. The topics have been adjusted to align with the curriculum and learning objectives appropriate for primary level students. Here are some tips for an effective scope and sequence document. Consider the logical progression of concepts. Make sure that students have the prerequisite knowledge they need before learning about each topic. Consider any dependencies between topics. For example, students need to learn about the basics of gravity before they can learn about more complex concepts like planetary motion. Be realistic about the amount of time that you have available. Don't try to cram too much material into a short period of time. Be flexible. You may need to adjust the scope and sequence document throughout the school year. Review the scope and sequence document regularly. Make sure that it is still meeting the needs of your students and your curriculum. Five, identify supplementary resources. Determine if any additional resources, such as worksheets, hands-on activities, visuals, or online resources are needed to enhance the understanding of the course book content. These resources can provide opportunities for interactive learning, exploration, and reinforcement of key concepts. Here are examples of supplementary resources that could be used to enhance the understanding of the course book content in primary science. Worksheets. Provide age-appropriate worksheets that include exercises, diagrams, and simple experiments to reinforce concepts and encourage critical thinking. Hands-on activities. Design hands-on activities and experiments that allow students to explore scientific phenomena and apply their knowledge in a practical way. 
These activities can be conducted in the classroom or as part of outdoor observations. Visuals and illustrations. Use visual aids such as posters, charts, diagrams, and pictures to reinforce key concepts and facilitate understanding. Visuals can help students visualize abstract ideas and make connections between different elements. Online resources and interactive websites. Utilize interactive websites, educational apps, and online resources specifically designed for primary science education. These resources may include interactive simulations, virtual experiments, games, and quizzes. Science kits. Make use of age-appropriate science kits that provide materials and instructions for conducting experiments related to the coursebook topics. These kits can engage students in hands-on learning experiences. Children's books and reference materials. Supplement the coursebook with age-appropriate books, magazines, and reference materials that present scientific concepts in an engaging and accessible manner. These examples suggest supplementary resources that can enhance the understanding of coursebook content in primary science. The selection of resources should be based on the specific topics covered, the level of the students, and the availability of materials. It is important to choose resources that align with the learning objectives and provide opportunities for interactive learning, exploration, and reinforcement of key concepts suitable for primary level students. Here are some tips for using additional resources effectively. Plan ahead. Before you start teaching a new topic, identify any additional resources that you will need. Use a variety of resources. Don't rely on just one type of resource. Use a variety of resources to appeal to different learners. Make sure that the resources are aligned with the learning objectives. The resources that you use should help students to achieve the learning objectives for the topic. Make the resources engaging. Choose resources that are visually appealing and that will keep students interested. Provide students with time to use the resources. Don't just give students a worksheet and tell them to complete it. Give them time to explore the resources and to learn from them. Six, plan assessments. Identify appropriate formative and summative assessments to evaluate students' understanding of the content. Design assessments that align with the learning objectives and provide a comprehensive evaluation of students' knowledge and skills. Here are examples of formative and summative assessments that can be used to evaluate students' understanding of content in primary science. Formative assessment, draw and label. Ask students to draw and label diagrams or illustrations to demonstrate their understanding of key science concepts. This assessment helps assess their ability to represent and explain scientific ideas visually. Summative assessment, science experiments. Engage students in hands-on science experiments related to the concepts taught in class. Assess their ability to follow instructions, make observations, collect data, and draw conclusions. This assessment evaluates their understanding of the scientific method and their application of scientific knowledge. Formative assessment, class discussions. Facilitate whole class or small group discussions where students can share their understanding of science concepts and ask questions. This assessment encourages active participation and allows teachers to assess students' verbal communication skills and comprehension. Summative assessment, science projects. Assign students to complete science projects that require them to research a specific topic, conduct investigations, and present their findings. This assessment evaluates their research skills, critical thinking, and ability to communicate scientific information effectively. Here are some tips for designing effective assessments. Make sure that the assessments are aligned with the learning objectives. The assessments that you use should measure how well students have achieved the learning objectives for the unit or topic. Use a variety of assessment types. Different types of assessments can measure different aspects of students' learning. By using a variety of assessment types, you can get a more comprehensive picture of students' learning. Make sure that the assessments are appropriate for the level of students' abilities. The assessments that you use should be challenging but achievable for all students. Provide students with clear instructions. Students should know what they are expected to do on the assessment and how they will be graded. Give students enough time to complete the assessment. 
students should not feel rushed when they are completing an assessment. Review the assessments carefully. After students have completed an assessment, review the results carefully. Look for patterns in the data and identify areas where students need additional support. 7. Differentiate instruction. Consider the diverse needs of students in the classroom and plan for differentiation strategies. This may include providing additional resources for struggling students, offering extension activities for advanced learners, or adapting the instructional approach to accommodate different learning styles. Here are examples of differentiation strategies that can be used to accommodate the diverse needs of students in the primary science classroom. Additional resources for struggling students. Provide simplified reading materials or alternative texts that present science concepts in a more accessible language or format for struggling readers. Offer additional practice worksheets or interactive online resources that provide extra support and reinforcement for struggling students. Utilize manipulatives or hands-on materials to help struggling students visualize and understand abstract science concepts. Extension activities for advanced learners. Assign advanced research projects or inquiry-based investigations that allow advanced learners to explore scientific concepts in more depth. Provide opportunities for advanced learners to pursue independent research on science topics of interest. Encourage advanced learners to mentor or assist their peers during collaborative activities, allowing them to deepen their own understanding while supporting others. Adapted instructional approaches for different learning styles. Incorporate hands-on experiments, demonstrations, and sensory experiences for kinesthetic learners to actively engage with scientific phenomena. Use visual aids, such as diagrams, charts, and illustrations, to support visual learners' understanding of scientific concepts. Provide audio recordings, storytelling, or group discussions to accommodate auditory learners who benefit from listening to information. Here are some tips for differentiating your instruction effectively. Start by identifying the diverse needs of your students. What are their strengths and weaknesses? What are their learning styles? Consider different ways to differentiate your instruction. There are many different differentiation strategies that you can use. Choose strategies that are appropriate for your students and your curriculum. Plan your lessons and activities with differentiation in mind. Think about how you can meet the needs of all learners when you are planning your lessons and activities. Be flexible and adaptable. What works for one student may not work for another. Be willing to try different strategies to meet the needs of all learners. Monitor student progress and adjust your instruction as needed. Keep track of how students are doing and make adjustments to your instruction as needed. 8. Review and revise. Continuously review the mapped coursebook to ensure that it meets the needs of the students and aligns with the curriculum standards. Seek feedback from teachers, students, and curriculum experts to make necessary revisions and improvements. Here are examples of how to review and revise a mapped coursebook for primary science. Seek feedback from teachers. Conduct surveys or interviews with primary science teachers to gather their feedback on the coursebook. Ask for their input on the clarity of the content, appropriateness of the activities, and overall effectiveness of the instructional materials. Organize collaborative planning sessions with teachers to discuss specific strengths and weaknesses of the coursebook and solicit their suggestions for improvements. Gather feedback from students. Administer surveys or questionnaires to students to gauge their perception of the coursebook. Ask about their understanding of the content, their engagement with the activities, and their preferences for learning materials. Encourage students to provide specific feedback on areas they find challenging or topics they would like to explore further. Consult curriculum experts. Engage curriculum experts or experienced educators in primary science to review the coursebook. Seek their professional insights on the alignment of the content with the curriculum standards, appropriateness of the difficulty level, and suggestions for enhancing the learning experience. Analyze assessment results. Review assessment results, including formative and summative evaluations to identify areas where students may be struggling or excelling. 
Use this data to assess the effectiveness of the coursebook in supporting student learning and adjust the content accordingly. Teacher Reflection and Observation Encourage teachers to reflect on their experiences using the coursebook and make note of areas that may need improvement or clarification. Conduct classroom observations to observe how teachers and students are interacting with the coursebook and identify any challenges or areas for enhancement. Student surveys and feedback. Administer surveys or feedback forms to students to gather their perspectives on the coursebook. Ask about their understanding of the content, the clarity of explanations, and their engagement with the material. Encourage students to provide specific suggestions for improving the coursebook, such as additional examples, hands-on activities, or interactive elements. Collaborative professional development. Organize professional development workshops or meetings with primary science teachers to collaboratively review the coursebook. Facilitate discussions to share best practices, exchange ideas, and address any concerns or challenges related to the content. External review. Invite external experts in education or curriculum design to review the coursebook. Seek their expertise to ensure the content aligns with the curriculum standards, addresses key concepts effectively, and provides engaging learning experiences. Mapping the curriculum in a primary science subject is a crucial step for educators to ensure effective teaching and meet the diverse needs of their students. By aligning the curriculum with grade level standards, educators ensure that the content covers the essential science concepts appropriate for primary school learners. Analyzing the curriculum allows for logical sequencing and coherence of topics, making it easier for students to understand. Mapping the curriculum also helps in setting specific learning goals and aligning the content accordingly. By identifying any gaps or areas that need further emphasis, educators can plan instructional strategies and select appropriate resources to accommodate different learning styles within the primary science classroom. Differentiation approaches can be used to ensure all students, regardless of their abilities, can access and engage with the curriculum. Furthermore, incorporating assessments aligned with the curriculum helps evaluate student progress and provides valuable feedback to guide instructional adjustments. By using a variety of formative and summative assessments, teachers can assess students' understanding of the science concepts taught and identify areas where additional support may be needed. Overall, mapping the curriculum in primary science enhances instructional planning, supports student learning, and promotes successful implementation of the science curriculum in the classroom. It allows teachers to deliver engaging and developmentally appropriate lessons that meet the unique needs and interests of primary school students. As we conclude today's webinar on strategically mapping instruction from curriculum standards to differentiated teaching, let's encapsulate our roadmap for crafting effective educational experiences in primary science classrooms. Our journey commenced with identifying curriculum standards, the foundational step that anchors our teaching to pivotal benchmarks and competencies. Through analyzing the coursebook, we've unraveled how to weave the core content with those standards, ensuring comprehensive coverage. Aligning with learning objectives then guided us to tether each lesson to concrete goals derived from the curriculum, shaping our teaching trajectory. The creation of a scope and sequence provided us with a strategic blueprint, dictating the progression of topics and establishing a scaffolded learning environment. With the identification of supplementary resources, we explored ways to bolster the core curriculum, integrating diverse materials to cater to varied learning modalities and to invigorate the instruction with practical, hands-on experiences. Our instruction design wouldn't be complete without planning assessments, a crucial step in gauging educational outcomes and refining our teaching practices to ensure alignment with our learning objectives. Finally, we embraced the philosophy of differentiating instruction, which empowers us to tailor our educational approaches, addressing the unique learning needs and styles of each student, and fostering an inclusive classroom environment. Thank you for investing your valuable time with us today. Remember, the best teacher is the best learner. 
Let's continue to learn, adapt, and thrive in our noble profession. Until next time, happy teaching. You can access the comprehensive PDF document associated with this presentation through the Learning Management System, Global CPD Continuing Professional Development for Teachers and School Leaders. Global CPD is an organization with a vision to provide relevant, effective, and innovative professional development for teachers and educational leaders in English medium school and university contexts. Global CPD offers professional development courses to teachers and administrators through a solid program of needs analysis by setting short, medium, and long-term goals for better quality education and provision of specialized training programs with follow-up support. To learn more about Global CPD work and services, contact us by email at admin at global-cpd.org or visit our website at www.global-cpd.org. Many of our services have online forms, which allow you to access services at any time that is convenient to you. Learning teachers lead the way. Teachers.